Today I'm sewing and sharing Simplicity 9233. There are a few views offered for this pattern that gives you a few choices on how to finish your sleeve bands as well as your neckline. I've chosen View C today. You can pick up this pattern at your local fabric store, but you could also purchase it online. I've left a link for you below so that you can find the pattern, check out the details, grab a copy, and sew it along with me. So cut out all your pieces, mark your darts and notches, and let's get started. Apply interfacing to one of your back neck bands, one set of front neck bands, both of your front facing pieces, and both sleeve band pieces. Grab your front pieces and let's prepare our darts. I transferred my dart onto the wrong side of my fabric and now I'm ready to fold it in half and pin it in place. Pin through one dart leg and out the other. And then take it to your machine and stitch from the outer edge to the point, leaving thread tails at the end so that you can tie them in knots. And repeat to complete the dart on your other front piece as well. And then we're going to take both front pieces back to our machine and sew gathering stitches at the topmost edge. Start your gathering stitches from the notch you transferred from your pattern piece all the way to the seam line, so 5 eighths away from the edge of your fabric. I'm going to use the longest stitch length on my machine and sew about a half an inch from the edge. And do this for both front pieces. Before I place my front pieces right sides together and sew the seam, I'm going to finish both of these seams separately from top to bottom using my serger. And then place both front pieces right sides together, pin starting from the dot that you transferred from your pattern piece all the way down to the bottom. And then sew these pieces together starting from your dot all the way to the bottom and make sure to back stitch at this dot to reinforce. Now grab your two front facing sections and place them right sides together and you should have transferred a dot from your pattern piece. We're going to pin from this dot to the bottom of the fabric. And then sew from your dot to the bottom of the fabric with a 5 8 inch seam allowance remembering to back stitch at the dot to secure. Now I'm going to take this piece to my serger and serge the sides and lower edges. I've pressed this seam open just so I could catch these pieces in my serging, but this could also serve as my stitching guide for later. Now we're going to attach the facing to the center front. I'm going to open out that center front, and with right sides together I'm going to place my facing on top, and then I'm going to pin the left side of the facing to the left center front from the top of the fabric to the dot. So now that I have that pinned, I'm going to take it to my machine and sew the 5 8 inch seam allowance from the front of my facing to the dot. And once I have that side sewn, I'm going to repeat the same steps to attach the rest of my facing on the other side. Sewing again from the top of the garment to the dot. Once you have both sides stitched, you can flip the facing to the inside. Give that center slit a good press. And then pin through your center front on both sides to secure that facing in place. And then go to your machine and stitch 5 eighths of an inch away from both sides of your center front, including sewing a square formation around the bottom pointed end of your slit. So you'll sew in one continuous stretch, pivoting at the bottom of the slit 5 eighths of an inch away from the slit, pivoting again on the other side to sew all the way back up. And then grab your back bodice piece and we're going to sew gathering stitches on the topmost edge, starting 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge to 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge on the other side. Sew in the same way we sewed gathering stitches earlier using the longest stitch on your machine and leaving thread tails on either side so that you have threads to pull for gathering. Now grab your upper sleeve and we're going to create the darts in the upper sleeve in the same way as we did for the front bodice. Pin the darts for both upper sleeves and sew from the outside to the point and then tie your thread tails to secure. Stay stitch the bottom curve of both of these sleeves to prevent stretching when we attach the lower sleeve later. I'm just going to stitch a half inch away from both lower edges. Now place your upper sleeve and your back piece right sides together. Match your notches and pin in place along the armhole. Sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I also serged the edges to finish. And then take the sleeve that we just sewed to the back piece and place it right sides together with its corresponding front piece. Match your notches and pin your armhole. 
Sew this seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, serge to finish, and repeat these steps to attach your other sleeve. Place your front and back bodice right sides together, and pin or clip your side seams, starting from the bottom edge of your sleeve, over that adjoining seam, and all the way to the bottom hem. And do this on both sides. Stitch with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and serge your seams to finish. Now grab your lower sleeve and stay stitch the top curve of your lower sleeve in the same way as we did for the bottom of our upper sleeve. And then fold your sleeve right sides together and pin or clip the underarm seam. Sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then serge and repeat these steps for your other lower sleeve. Now place your lower sleeve and your upper sleeve right sides together matching your notches and underarm seam and pin in place. Sew these sleeve pieces together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then serge your seam and repeat for your other lower sleeve. I've gone ahead and pressed both of the lower unnotched edges of my sleeve bands to the inside by 5 8 of an inch. Now place each of the sleeve bands right sides together and pin the short ends. Stitch both ends with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. Now place the notched edge of your band right sides together with the bottom of your sleeve. Match your notches and underarm seam and pin in place all the way around. Sew all the way around with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and do this for both of your sleeve bands. And then trim those seams by about half. And then with this seam allowance pressed down toward the sleeve band, Take your folded pressed end of your sleeve band and fold it upward just over that stitching line. Pin in place all the way around. Once you have that sleeve band pinned all the way around, the instructions say to slip stitch the sleeve band to the sleeve all the way around. But I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and stitch in the ditch of the original sleeve band seam periodically checking the inside to make sure that I am catching the other end of the sleeve band as I go. Do this for both sleeve bands. Place your interface neckband pieces right sides together matching your notches and pin in place. Sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. Repeat the same steps for your uninterfaced neckband pieces and then you can set these aside. Place your interfaced neckband right sides together with your neckline matching your center backs and pin in place. Also match the shoulder seam of your neckband with the seam of the dart at the top of your sleeve and pin in place. And do that on both sides. Go ahead and clip from the dart to the sleeve seam on both sides because that portion of the top of the bodice will not be gathered. Then start pulling the gathering stitches that we stitched into the top of the back bodice to fit the back neckband. Once it fits, pin in place. And do the same for the other half of the back neckband. And now flip your blouse over so we can start working on the front neckband. Pin the front neckband to your center front, allowing the neckband to extend 5 8 of an inch beyond the center front. And pin in place. Do this on both sides of the neckband. And then go ahead and pin this side of the sleeve to the neckband as far as the sleeve seam on this side. And then we can start pulling our front gathering stitches to fit the front neckband. Pull together until it fits the front neckband and then pin in place and do this on both sides of the front piece. Then take it to your machine and stitch all around your neckband from center front to center front with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then trim your seam and clip your curves. Fold your ties in half lengthwise right sides together and clip the long edges and one short edge. 
Sew your long edge and one short edge, leaving one edge open, and sew the 3 8 inch seam allowance. Do this for both of your ties. And then clip the corners of the ends that you sewed, and turn your ties right side out. And then give your ties a really good press. I've gone ahead and basted both of the open ends of my ties, and now I'm going to match my tie with the short raw edge of my neckline facing so that the raw edges of the facing and the tie meet, and the seam of my tie is facing downward, just lining up my tie with the seam of my neckband, and pin in place. And do the same with your other tie band. And baste both of these ties in place. Take your remaining neckband piece to your ironing board, and press the outer notched edge to the inside by 5 eighths of an inch all the way around and then place your uninterfaced neckband right sides together with your interface neckband, matching your center back, your seams, and your center fronts, and pin in place. Note that you are sandwiching the ends of your tie between both neckbands on both sides. Now we're going to sew both short ends and all around the upper neckband from center front to center front with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Clip your corners and trim your seam all the way around. And then we're going to understitch our facing. So we're going to press the seam that we just sewed so that it's facing upward. And then we're going to sew about an eighth of an inch away from the original stitching line, sewing the seam allowance to the uninterfaced side of the neckband. And we're going to do that all around the top edge. Note that as you approach both of your corners, your presser foot won't be able to understitch all the way to the corner, so just understitch as far as you can. Turn your facing right side out, and then give that neckline a really good press along that seam. And then I'm going to take the pressed edge of my neckband and place it just over my neckband stitches, pin in place just as we did for the sleeve band. Then once you have that inner neckband pinned in place all the way around, take it to your machine and stitch in the ditch of your original seam line all the way from center front to center front, periodically checking underneath to make sure that you are catching this facing as you sew. The very last step is to hem the bottom of our blouse. I've gone ahead and pressed up my hem by a quarter of an inch, and then again by one inch, and now I'm going to edge stitch all around the bottom of the blouse close to this inner fold, and then you'll be done with your blouse. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration, and I'll see you in the next video.